Hey guys, it's Sassens here, and in today's video, I want to talk to you about the, the overall picture of my strategy uh, of how I did my townboard questing to get the world first level 60. Uh, I will be making more videos going a little bit more into detail and to talk about where you can get everything and, and all the nitty gritty stuff. But this one is just going to be uh, a quick overview, something that uh, you can take your own knowledge and, uh, and add to the game. And uh, it starts uh, with the map. You have to do town boards in multiple different locations. I decided to use Winsport as my crafting hub. As I think this town has the absolute best layout. Everything is nice and close to each other compared to Monarch or Everfall. So when I first started out the server, I did 1 to 20 myself. Uh, side questing and all that stuff. That's what I mean by that. And then as soon as I had steel tools at level 20... I started doing uh, town board missions and the reason why town board missions are so fantastic is you want to level up your trade skills right and whenever you level up a trade skill whether it's logging refining crafting whatever it takes it gives you a lot of experience points whenever you level them up so let's just say you're weaponsmithing you get a level 116 to 17 you probably get about a thousand xp and it's the same for a lot of these skills so as you progress up your uh your trade skills, they just give a bunch of XP. Uh, but on top of that, to progress your town post missions, when all your trade skills are low, the, the town post missions you get, they're actually pretty bad. But as you get higher, I think some of the thresholds like 50, 65, 75, 100, you have a chance of getting better and better missions that give more and more experience points. So that's why they might seem really bad at first, but it's actually so much experience. Uh, I think... I hit level 60 in 59 hours on day 3 and it took like almost 20 hours before I saw another level 60 in the world. That was how long I could hold it because I was so efficient at the town boats. So I just want to tell you, they're good. They might seem better first, but all these things you want for late game and it just gets better and better and better. The higher level you get, the more experience you get. Boom, 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 boom. Yep. So uh, what I did at the very first, uh, this is without any houses. I was so fortunate that our faction and uh, my uh, my company, we owned Monarch's Bluff. This was owned by Covenant, so I set a recall here at my inn in Emma, or in the Windspread. And I would run to Everfall. So basically, what I would do is I would run to Everfall, pick up Town Quest. I would run to Monarch, pick up Town Quest. And every now and then when I had the recall, I could recall back here. And on the way, there's a lot of resources, right? You have to run between these three towns, pick up your town port missions. We'll come back to that later. You can pick up resources on the way. I just quickly want to talk a little bit about some of the resources. Here, for example, there's a lot of lynx. There's a lot of rabbits. If you need to kill wolves, there's obviously wolf caves next to all the starter zones. We're, <laughs> we're here, so there's a wolf cave here and here. Um, if you want to go for iron and stone, uh, running from Everfall to Monox Bluff, you get all the iron and stone and flint and nuts that you need in the world to craft food with. If you need leather, you can go to Ofel Grotto. There's links here. There's an amazing leather farming spot. If you need fiber, this entire area is amazing. If you need any tier 2 food ingredients, Farside Township and Lakeside Farm, you can get about 200 to 300 of the uh, raw tier 2 uh, vegetables to craft food with. And then whenever you go to a town, you can pick up milk and you can pick up honey. And uh, that's pretty much was my early route. That's been where I'm farming all my materials in just this uh, triangle here. Uh, with some fast travels uh, in between. Um, what I do is I uh, pick up missions from every single settlement. And then I have my bank here in uh, in Winsford where I store everything. And when you have missions for every single zone. You can just simply go to the crafting stations. And then you can craft everything you want at the same time. And it's uh, this way. You um, obviously you can empty your inventory. So you can fast travel for cheaper. You, uh, you're way more heavy when you fast travel with things in your person right? And uh, it also gives standing. Let's talk about the standing in a little bit. Uh, I wanted to buy my first house in Winsford. And the first house you buy in New World, you get 50% discount. So I wanted to rush level 30 territory standing. So I was eligible to purchase a tier 4 house. Now the best way to do that is again town boats. But one thing people might not think about is these explorer needed missions. They actually give a lot of territory standing. And some of them are really easy. So let's just say we get these two. You can go and run these two uh, <laughs> um, explorer needs mission and you will get a thousand, a thousand territory standing. 
And this is a great way to boost up your territory standing in the uh, inner zone. So I have 48 wins for now, but if you want the level 30, you can go out of your way. You can do some extra ones to these one if you see like kill kill some rabbits, kill some wolves, kick some mortar. All of these gives a uh, great territory standing. So uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, that's I went out of my way to get 30 territory standing day one and then purchase a big house. And after I purchased a house in Windsford, right? Then I moved up my recall to Everfall. And then I could, you know, fast travel to my house because you can reset that. I could recall to Everfall. I owned Monarchs, so it was cheap. And then I could run to Cutlass Keys and pick up missions there. Um, and I did that for the first uh, one and a half days. And then after that, I had enough money to buy a house in... What is this? The Spritewood? So I would uh, end up with having a, a recall in Everfall, Monarchs Bluff here. Fast call, <laughs> fast travel with the house, fast travel with the house. And if I had spare time in between doing these four zones, I could run to get less keys and pick up more missions. So essentially, I ended up doing four to five uh, townport zones at the same time, ending up getting crazy experience points. It's really good. You just kind of have to um, figure out how you can get all the materials. Um, let's talk about the materials, right? So the quests that I think that are good, it's all the armor smith ones. It's all the weaponsmith ones, uh, all crafting tier 1 food, so travel rations and uh, energizing travel rations and the, uh, the light ones as well. So tier 1 and tier 2 food I think is really really easy to sustain. Also I like to do the um, kill rabbits, kill turkeys, kill wolf quest and kill elk quest because you can uh, make meat boxes for that. There is one meat box, or well, there's two good meat boxes uh, when you get a little bit high to your cooking. It gives a lot of XP. Um, and then I pick up uh, the fruit boxes as well. So whenever I'm in Monarch's Bluffs, for example, I can pick up strawberries. So whenever I go craft here, there's a farm, there's a lot of strawberries. Um, and then whenever I'm in the wild, I pick up cranberries, I pick up blueberries. And then I can make fruit boxes. Okay, so tier 1 fruit, tier 2 fruit, meat boxes, fruit boxes. Those are all the cooking ones that I do. Uh... I, I only do those uh, killing of the animals because, you know, they go into those boxes, at least the meat boxes. Um, and then I think all gathering and refining are fine. The only one that's a little bit of waste of a time is... Um, the only mission that's a little bit of waste of a time is the wood gathering and wood refining. But, I mean, you need the skill anyway. And if you have some spare time, you can do it. If you want territory standing in zone, you can go out of your way and do it. But, I mean, if you really want to skid or skip... Some of the turning green would turn in lumber, turn in timber. That's absolutely fine as well. That's up to you. Um, so yeah, that's that. That's the strat. That's what I did. Uh, I will go into detail in the, to exactly where you can find the best spots for this and uh, more of these things later. But I hope this gives you a good idea to how to get started, how to approach it, which missions are a little bit important, and then over time you can just find out better and better routes and. Uh, I, th I think town ports are amazing. I think um, that people, when they first look at them, they're like, hey, this only gives 300 XP. Hey, this only gives 600 XP. This is really bad. It is actually pretty bad at first, but it becomes better and better and better, right? That's uh, that's uh, that's the secret. So, so you just got to keep going, keep leveling up those skills, keep, uh, keep grinding, and um, you'll get a lot of experience points. And, you know, I thought it was amazing. I actually really loved it. The learning progression of trying to improve and learn new spots to farm, learn new spots to gather. See if I can become more efficient. I really enjoyed that aspect of the game. And uh, I hope this uh, motivates you to try it out and see if you could like it. If you're struggling a bit with leveling, if you like the side quest or uh, not, <laughs> not providing you enough experience points. Alright, that's it for this uh, short little video. If you have any questions, uh, please leave some comments, leave some likes. Uh, if you want live answer question, I'll be streaming on Twitch a lot. Twitch.tv slash Larsen. And uh, I'll hope to see you guys in the next video where I break down all my farming spots and uh, a few other uh, min-maxing tips about it. Alright guys, take care. Bye-bye.